Sometimes you have a chapter in a textbook or in a class like this. This is an introduction class in international business. So we're going on a huge broad spectrum of what it takes to run international business. This aspect of foreign exchange risk is really big because of the fact there's fluctuations between currencies and you have the fluctuations based upon a number of factors and some of them are things you never heard of or thought of in the aspect of, of country as you go through. You go into another country, you may have an unstable government and all of a sudden they're printing money faster than anything. At one point, Venezuela, the, the, the biggest import into the country was paper to print their money on. They're shipping in plane loads all the time and everything else, and the money's got 1,000% annual inflation in the process. How do you operate in a culture like that? A loaf of bread today is $1, and a year from now, it's $1,000. How do you sit down to make a profit? And basically you don't, the only smartest thing to do is to leave the country as you go through until they actually have some sane government process as they go through the process. The transaction exposure could be dramatic because you're there trying to sit down there and get oil or gas or whatever you're in the country doing and, you, and, and the prices are so unstable, it's hard to sit down and report back to, yes, we have X number of dollars. And, and say, Wait a minute, I got to change my reports. You have 17 change of report all in the same day because of inflation just in that one area. So you have that and you're trying to translate to a country that has somewhat more stable currency in the process. So the transaction exposure, because of the changes between the settlement, you may have a contract that's based on this dollar amount, and then all of a sudden that contract dollar amount is dramatically changed because there's a 30% differential between the time you sign the contract and by the time the contract is completed. So what do you pay? Do you pay what you agreed on in the contract and writing, or do you have, to have a different rate over here in the process? Those things end up being discussed and it'd be very grave issues in the process. There's different ways to cover that. You refuse to enter into foreign currency contracts, only use US dollars as a process. Then you practice exposure net head netting as you go through, use a forward market hedge or a currency option as you go through. So you define how you're gonna pay the dollar amount. There's different kinds of hedges. Then also make an agreement based on the swap contract as you go through. So here's some of the definitions of hedges as you go through. A foreign currency contract sold or brought forward, Okay, that's one option. Another one is sell a specific amount of foreign currency at a specific time. Whatever it is on this date, you put that right in there. A money market hedge, you borrow and lend in the domestic and foreign money markets as you go through. And you put all this right in the contract, how you're going to have that, or you swap contracts as a spot sale of an asset against the future purchase sale of an equal amount as you go through. So here's this over here, whatever it is here on the same date, when we complete the contract, we have it over here. It really is very complicated and very tricky. And I realized that the probability of you being knowledgeable about this by the time you finish this course and remembering it 10 years from now is relatively slim. But the purpose of bringing it up over here is I want you to be aware of it in the process. When you get involved, when you become running a company or you become an executive in a company, I want you to be able to point back to this class saying, yeah, I remember about the hedge options that we had over here, something about forward market and everything else. Let me go back to my book. Yeah, that's what this is about. I'm priming you for, for your use outside of this class to make you successful in the world of international business. So a lot of it comes down to this single word over here is translation, the translation exposure. Your financial position can be compromised because of the fact that there is instability as to how you're going to sit down and pay as an ongoing process as you pay out a contract. Then what does the end dollar amount you go through? You have to define it in the contract as to how you're going to pay it on each individual payment as you go through, especially when there's an unstable currency and especially the value amount at the very end of a contract. We call it economic exposure. In other words, the value of future class cash flows is going to be affected by unanticipated exchange rate movements. It's a big deal because of the fact that exchange rates really do define as to the value as to what you're paying. And the country that you're in, they want to make money and they're entitled to do so, just like you're entitled to make money in the process as you go through for work that you complete. So make certain you define things clearly as to how you're going to pay at the beginning and at the end. Another thing I need to really talk about the aspect of taxation. There's a couple of different ways of tax. One is the income tax, which is pretty common in the United States. 
you know, you make a certain amount of income, boom. Right now, a corporation pays 21% corporate taxes. And by the time we're done with Washington, at, at the time of this recording, they're talking about increasing that 6%. We have no idea what the end result is, but regardless, a 6% increase is actually pretty substantial as you're out, out there because of the fact you're sitting there looking at this, I made this much money this year. And all of a sudden now you make 6% less money, they did exactly the same business next year as you go through. One of the most corrosive taxes, in my opinion, is a value added tax. I think it is foolish beyond belief. I've written a couple papers on it. In essence, what happens in the United States, you pay a sales tax on finished products that you go through. Right now, my computer is sitting on a wooden table. In essence, what happened once upon a time, somebody went through and, and they had a wooden table they went through and they harvested in some farmer's woods as you go through. So somebody went out, they cut down some lumber and they sat down there and they brought a truck in, they harvested the goods as they went out. And so they didn't pay sales tax on it. Somebody then took it to a logger, the, to, to a mill and the mill went through and they cut it down into boards. Then that mill turned around and sold it to a furniture maker. They put it together. They sold that to a retailer. The retailer then went through and they, they sold it to the end user, which was me. So that being said, I paid one tax on it. With a value added tax, by it being corrosive, let me give you an example of it. Instead of paying four to 6% sales tax one time, okay, the farmer that sold it, okay, he's got to pay four to 6%. And the, 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 the logger that harvests it sells it to the mill, then pays four to 6%. And then the mill sits down there, they sell the boards to the furniture maker, they pay four to 6%. And then they sell it to a retailer, they pay four to 6%. So instead of the final product, me paying four to 6% sales tax on it, everybody in the whole line had to pay that amount of money. So you're talking about the product being inflated to over 25% of the value that you would normally pay without a value added tax. This is a dangerous tax in my opinion, but it doesn't matter because those countries that have it, they haven't consulted me and they may not even care if they did. They have this as a structure and you as the international corporate executive, you need to sit down there and know about a value added tax. There's other ways to avoid it in the process, but you don't want to be accused of actually defrauding that government. You need to work with them, but be aware of a value added tax and an income tax, and also the aspect of a withholding tax. It's an indirect tax paid by the payer, usually on passive income. So know about the country going into about the taxation basis. You may be all fired up to go to this other country. Know what you're getting into on the money side of it, because it may have an impact onto your effectiveness as a leader in that country as you go through. And foreign operations, there's different ways of doing it. Sometimes it's a, just a branch of the parent company as you go through. Sometimes it's a separate entity that we call a subsidiary. It's affiliated, but has certain different rules and it has to operate on its own. And sometimes it's a controlled foreign corporation. So it depends how they go through. Some companies, you have to have 50% ownership in the country you can do operations in. All three are pretty common, just depends what the country as you go through. And, and part of it is tax exposure, Part of it is actually making certain company benefits the country you're going into. So on a foreign exchange risk management, reduce your transaction exposure, pay attention to the current exchange rate and watch the taxation as to how income tax, value added tax, withholding tax, and different industries will also have all kinds of different special taxes that you go through. And so make certain you understand the taxation because it's gonna have an impact on your bottom line. Take care.